Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series where we review every Capcom CP, CPS Dash, CPS System 2, and CPS System 3 game. Today we're taking a look at Nemo. It's a really fun 2D side-scrolling kind of action platformer game and it's definitely unique as far as the Capcom games are concerned on the platform. Before we get too far involved, though, give me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down there as well. But I really enjoy Nemo, and that's coming from perspective of not really having ever watched the anime or other things like that. I remember when this game came out, and I remember that there was a little Nemo game on the NES. He was popular back when I was a kid. I just never really got into it, so I'm reviewing this from a complete independent perspective of being a huge fan of the anime or anything else like that. What we have on offer is a really competent, awesome, side-scrolling action platform game. It kind of, in a way, seems like the cartoony version of Ghouls and Ghosts. Not that Ghouls and Ghosts isn't cartoony in its own right, but it still has that same kind of travel right, attack enemies vibe to it. But it's definitely a lot more forgiving than Ghouls and Ghosts is ever going to be. But again, like I've been complaining about, I hate that noise that Capcom puts in when my life gets low. So you will see in this video at multiple points in time, I'm going to take an intentional death just so I don't have to listen to that. But as far as this game itself is concerned, it's one of the most colorful and detail-oriented games on the Capcom Play System platform. And it is one of the later games as well, so it definitely graphically is more impressive than some of the other games we've talked about so far on this series. I love how many sprites the game's moving around at once. You have so many different enemies to attack. Some are small, some are large. This definitely feels the closest to a game that would have just come out on a console, because every time I talk about platform games in arcade settings, I always say that while they're really good, they're not usually as good as anything you would get on a console. This seems like it was 100% a console design game that just happened to come out in arcades, and that is a compliment that I'm giving to it. It's just that well designed, well thought out, and impressive. And you will see here, it's very basic. I mean, we have our staff and a little bit of a magic attack, and then we can pick things up and throw them at our enemies. So it's really simple to learn, but actually mastering the game and getting good at it is complicated because there's a lot of stuff going on at any given point in time. And what I really love so much is that each level feels wholly unique and distinct from the previous one. You never feel like you're playing the same area more than once. We went from, you know, being on a train to being in a cog world. Now we're, you know, on top of clouds with these giant screws that have these, I don't even know what those are on top of it, honestly. They look like Easter eggs, but they're too pointy. But I love all the visual imagery in this game. And I also love the fact that you can jump on enemies to hurt them as well because it gives you another mechanic as to how to move around. And movement tech in this game is going to be really important because you're always trying to avoid something. And some of the stages, I mean, they are quite short. You'll see here that we're already to the third round boss and I showed you that stage as it opened up. So the game's constantly moving really quickly forward. And I just really do like that because sometimes with beat-em-ups, even though this isn't really technically one of those, I feel like the stages can last slightly too long and I sort of get bored and want to see what's coming next. Nemo has none of those issues. As soon as you get into a level, you're doing something, you're enjoying yourself, you fight a boss and you get something completely different. The soundtrack is also excellent as well, so go ahead and listen to it for about a minute and I'll come back and tell you more about why if you've never played this game, you definitely should. But enjoy. <laughs> So yeah, the soundtrack, the sound effects, everything is quite awesome in this game except that low life warning that I always hate. But that's what I love about this game so much is that it's so unique and so different. The soundtrack is great, the graphics are great, and now we're onto this boss here, which I don't really know what it is, it's just a giant cogwheel and we have to hit it in the middle. But we have so many different things going on that we have to manage at any given point in time. And while the game is definitely oriented towards like a childlike look and feel, it can be quite difficult. And I really appreciate that about the game because we have enemies dropping down 
below us. We have things we can pick up. We have this area here that's usually safe until that arm comes out. And we have that track that's moving us around and pushing us out of the way. So there's a lot of things on screen to manage at once. And you do get a little bit of story element as well. I mean, granted, it's an arcade game, so what story is here isn't huge. But again, this is why I think it definitely feels like a console game, because we are getting more story in Nemo than we normally would for pretty much any other of the Capcom arcade games that I've been talking about. I feel like this was meant to just be straight translated over to the Super Nintendo, maybe with some graphical ground grades, but that obviously never happened. So this is all we have. I don't know if they didn't have the rights to it, if they couldn't get it running on something with the Super Nintendo, but this has the look and the feel and the story of something that was definitely 100% intended to be on a home console. I think it would have been a really nice addition to the Super Nintendo library. But now again, we're on to a completely different stage. We're riding the Morpheus, this ship here, and we're going to have to go up onto that smokestack as the water rises, and then we're going to have to ride a ball around trying to get back to land. It can be quite complicated because you have enemies coming from the left and the right. You're dealing with the water coming up. You don't want to fall in, and it's just a really interesting mechanic because if I fall in the water, I'm going to die, and you'll see there's that little pink dot on the ball and it does have momentum in both directions it's just a really nice change of pace for what's going on and then we jump over into this wooded area here and the game definitely starts feeling a lot like ghosts and goblins it almost seems like you know a spiritual twin to that game with a license on it versus just being another ghosts and goblins franchise entry which i think this definitely could have been but I can't recommend this game highly enough. I went into it, I've played it a few times, and I ended up remembering that I didn't like it that much, but I don't know why I thought that, because when I played it again for this series, I definitely wanted to complete the whole thing, and I am gonna continue to play it and try to get better and better at it. And that's the thing about replaying some of these games. Some games that I remember really loving back in the day, I think are just fine now. And some games that I really didn't have any attachment to, I'm now really enjoying. And that's kind of the fun part about doing series like this is that our perspectives are constantly changing. And now we have what I think is a reject from a Kirby boss fight coming in. And I just like how big the sprites are. I mean, graphically, this looks amazing. And maybe that's why it didn't actually get any sort of home port. But it's just a fun look. And as the lightning strikes, you see the mountain in the background. It's kind of hinting where you're going to be going next. And I would say that the boss fights are probably relatively easy. I think they're easier than a lot of the stages. I die usually more getting to a boss than I do actually on the boss fight. But now the run of that mountain, it just has a lot of things going on. We have these stone golems that we're fighting. We can climb up these stalactites or stalagmites. I'm never sure which direction those are going. And there is really nice verticality to the game that you don't really see in a lot of other arcade games like this. So definitely, if you've never played Nemo, I highly recommend you check it out. I'm playing it on the Mr. FPGA board, but you can emulate this if you want to. You can buy an original arcade board. They are not cheap, but I think it would definitely be worth it. But if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Did you watch the anime? Were you a fan of Nemo back in the day? Because I remember it being a popular series as a kid. I just never really got into it. So maybe people play this game and have a ton of nostalgia for Nemo that I just don't have myself. But short of that, we will be back next week with another episode in our Capcom review series. And we're going to fight this gigantic brain in a bubble ball. I mean, it's definitely a kids-oriented game, but some of the imagery just seems downright gross. We have what looks like intestines pinching us from the top and the bottom, and we have this brain just inhaling everything in its path. So that's really interesting. Definitely oriented more towards kids, but it has some imagery in it that just seems really gross. Like if I was 1990, I was six years old. If I saw that, I might actually not like it too much. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Like I mentioned earlier, if you do me a huge favor, go down below and hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell definitely helps us out. We hope you enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.